Hello everyone, this is Manuel at Manuel Martel Photography and today I would like to show you how to create this image in Luminar. So let's take a closer look. We have this great image that I created and I used two separate images. So I have the foreground or I should say the, the beach and the ocean and I replaced the sky to give it a more dramatic look. So what we're going to do here is we're going to look at the original image. So I use this one. So let's get started. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to go and transfer this image into Luminar. And from there, I will import the sky image, which is not into my Lightroom library at the moment. Okay, so here it is. So first thing first, what I'm going to try to do here is just make my work environment a little cleaner. I, I'm going to start from scratch so it's easy to follow here. I have the layer panel and the filter panel. From there, I'm going to add one layer. I'm going to go and do add new image layer. And I'm going to choose this specific image here and I will open it. So now I have two images into Luminar ready to work with. So I'm going to rename these. I'm going to rename all my layer today. So I'm going to call this ocean. I like to rename stuff. So it's just easy to keep track of what I'm doing here. I'm going to call this one sky. Okay. So with the sky image, as we can tell, the sky start like in the lower half part of the image. So I'm going to try to compress this sky so it matches the, uh, I would say like the first third, uh, top third of this image here. So you'll see what I mean in a second here. So I'm going to press on the sky image and then I'm going to change my opacity just so I can see what I'm doing. Now I'm able to see actually my ocean layer as well as my sky layer. So again, with the sky layer uh, selected, I will go here and choose the transform tool. So by doing so, I'm able to compress this image a little bit and then bring the sky up. Now I'm going to be um, mindful of the tree line that you may be able to see here. So I'm going to just maybe tilt this image a little bit, make it a little bit bigger so it fill everything in the top part. Oh, I don't know. Take the side, maybe just like that. And then I'm going to compress it just a little bit. I want to make sure that the tree line doesn't affect my horizon. So it looked just great like this. I just can make it a little wider, make sure everything is okay. And I will press apply. And I will bring my opacity back to 100%. So now I have this layer of my sky, which is actually on top of my ocean layer. So we'll need to create a mask so we can blend these two images together. So there's a few ways to do that. I can go into my layer option here and I will go to mask and I will uh, fill mask. That's what I'm going to do here. I just created a white mask as you can tell. It's a white mask. When uh, the color of the mask, if you're not familiar with it, if it's white, it means that it is uh, it, re it reveals to so mean that we can see what's going on. If I were to right click on my mask and invert mask, now it is black. So with the black, uh, it hides. So basically what we're going to do here is uh, we're going to put it back to the white foreground. OK, next step is I will take a brush. I'll make sure that my opacity is at 100 percent when I do it do that and the softness let's bring that down to about 40 percent or something like this and then we can just increase the size of the brush and then there's a plus sign in that circle we're going to click this to make sure we have a minus sign oh I double clicked it and then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to remove the bottom part of this image and I will try to make a first rough pass here to find the horizon line and hide everything okay so here it is so now you can tell it's not that much of a good job at the moment you can tell like here uh, we can see a, little, a lot of white so one tip for you guys if you were to take a super sharp brush and trying to go around whoops uh, we're gonna add instead of subtract here sorry and trying to add you can tell it just creates such like hard and harsh edges so when I replace sky like this especially on the horizon when there's no trees or anything around I try to take a soft brush and a bigger brush and I'll show you what I'm gonna do here about like 
between 40 and 50 percent normally it works so what i do is i normally come around and i just press close to my horizon line and then my sky is going to spill a little bit to the ocean so it's good to have it spill like this just a touch in my opinion because it it blends stuff a little bit better it may, might be a little too much so we're going to maybe come to 35 percent to have something a little bit cleaner so we're going to go around the horizon like this and then you can tell the difference right so the difference between the hard edges it looks so much more natural so i'm just going to press the alt option key which is the same thing if I were to press this one, it's just temporary. And I'm just gonna remove this hard edges from there. And I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna add that sky again. So again, just big brush, just come around, make it spill a little bit in the ocean, it's okay. So uh, I'm just making this pass like a little bit uh, rough at the moment. So once you're at home, just take your time when you do this, right? I'm just doing it for the sake of this tutorial and just doing it a little quicker here that I would normally uh, take a little bit more time doing this. So I'm just going to come around and keep working on this horizon line. And then you, I just come around and do one little click at the time where I think I need to blend it a little bit more, right? So sometimes you'll see it as a little bit too much white. So here we go. I'm going to make it spill a little bit better. It look good like this. So we're going to keep going. Now we're running into this uh, rock here. So what I'm going to do with the rock is I can go actually with a with a very kind of like hard brush, maybe like 10%. And I'm going to make my small, uh, my brush size a little smaller. And then I'm going to come around here. Uh, let, first, let's just remove uh, the spill that I created over the rocks there. So we, we're going to work a little bit more here with... Uh, harder brush so it looks a little bit more um, defined and I find once you get like a rock like this it's actually okay to just um, maybe I mess this up a little bit here so we'll get zoom a little bit so you can recreate a bit the shape of the rock if need be right because sometimes it's kind of hard so it's okay just to it's not like a well-defined like a tree or anything like that so or lighthouse or person or whatever it is if you're trying to go around something that you don't want to you know change the shape too much then you're really going to zoom in and the great thing about luminar is you can go around um, doing great mass by zooming up to a thousand percent and then you can tell now i'm very close to my subject here and i can really really change and make some very fine-tuned adjustment Okay, so if I'm to zoom back now, look at my result, it's still a little kind of a little bit too much of a gap here. So I'm going to come around again. I'm going to make my size brush a little bigger. Uh, 30 some percent was the best part. And then I'm going to come around. I'm going to make it spill just a little bit again into the ocean. And then I'm going to come around. Zoom out. Here it is. So it was fairly easy to do it this way. Uh, you could try to use a gradient mask uh, to do this, but I find using the brush, it's fairly easy and it give you a little bit more uh, fine tuning capability. Okay, now step two, now we blend those two images together. We have somewhat of an issue where um, the foreground color is a little different. There's a lot of blue in the sky, it's darker in the foreground, I have lots of, uh, I would say like orange and red. So we're gonna try to bring the actual uh, ocean layer, uh, get some blue tint to the ocean layer, I should say. So I'm gonna click on the ocean layer, I'm gonna add one filter to that one, and I'm gonna go around here and choose the split toning. I like to uh, choose that one because you can really fine tune what you wanna do here. So we're gonna, oops, we're gonna start with this, the hue and then we're gonna go around the blue, you can tell. Maybe a little darker like this. And then the highlights, we're gonna make sure the highlights change the color. So you can tell here in the water and everything, I kind of changed the, uh, the color, right? That's what's happening here. So maybe around, yeah, 50%. And then we're gonna choose more or less the same uh, hue for the shadows. And then we're gonna execute again, maybe 
around 28 30 percent or something like that okay then we're going to bring that sky layer back up and then if you take a look we have somewhat of a better um better coloring if you will between the sky and the uh, ocean layer they match better together so i'm going to add one more layer to this and the main idea is uh, i'm going to add a adjustment layer so you don't have to choose every, like something here right? you can just right click and then you have a clean slate here so i have a preset uh, that i really like that i created myself for a uh, when there's trees and it's uh, a cloudy day so i'm going to choose this one here and then i will just bring this out of there now i don't want the foliage answer and i do not want the vignette so all i'm left with right now is the highlights and shadows uh, the structure and the color contrast so the structure uh, highlights and shadows the highlights release for the clouds if i were to move that around you can see there's a little bit more definition in the cloud and into the uh, the water here so i kind of like it this way the structure add a little bit of hdr look to your photo and then the hue, the hue and color contrast have a little bit more contrast into your image now if you think that you're happy with the actual color of your uh, image right now then it's fine but what i see right now is there's a lot of green a little bit too much green into the uh the actual water here i'm not liking that too much so we're going to go back to the ocean and then with my saturation here or actually my hue hue i should uh just bring it back up just a tiny touch and then uh maybe see what that really do here so you can jump back and forth if you want it's still a little bit too much green to my liking uh, the highlights let's bring that up a little bit and then whoops see where we're at there yeah that's better okay so this will become my layer that we'll call color and this is a trick for you guys that I've learned over the last few years is if you want to blend two images together that were not taken the same day you need to make sure that your actual uh, contrast match as well as your base color and once you match that you add some color on the two images afterwards and that's what I did with this layer this is affecting the whole image and it really blends things uh, together very well here so I'm looking at my sky definition I really like this um, I really like the rain, can it spill a little bit in the ocean? Uh, if you think your mask is not that great or you want to change something, you can always revert to your mask, click here and go change something. But in this case, I really like this. So I guess what I'm going to do here is I will maybe add a little vignette to this image. So I'm going to press uh, add a new adjustment layer. Now I know I want to bring a vignette. So I'm just going to click here. I can rename vignette. And then what I like to do with the vignette is just go overboard at first. And then I'm able to really take a look at what I'm doing. Maybe just like this. I just want it on the edge. And then I like a little bit of inner brightness to this. And I'm going to reduce the amount of the vignette to somewhere where I feel I'm happy with it. About like this. So if you want to double check what it is without the filter, you can always press on the little orange circle there and it kind of like take it out so i really like what i did here so i think what i'm going to add maybe one more i could add a new layer if i want to uh to do that but i'm just going to add the filter here um i like sometimes to add a little soft focus to my uh, image i'll choose soft focus number two because it doesn't brighten the thing too much so if you go overboard it doesn't look too great but if you just add just a little bit around 18 or 20 it just add a little bit of that uh, I don't know it'll glow a little magical effect to it maybe it's too much we'll go to 15 here we go so I'm quite pleased with this uh, it was a few easy steps as you can see so it's not too hard to blend uh, images together in Luminar so um, just to recap a little bit here I took the ocean layer from Lightroom I did add a new layer uh, with the actual uh, sky image and then I place the sky properly 
then I went to the ocean layer just make sure that your color and your contrast match between the two and once that that's right and okay to your liking you just add like a color layer on top of it and then you can play around uh, Luminar have so much options but then your vignette afterwards and it'll soft glow so if you're happy with this which I am right now I'm gonna press apply and we're gonna go back to Lightroom so hopefully uh, this will help you do some image blending in the future uh, if you're new to Luminar uh, it is quite easy to do the actual image blending so if I were to look what we've done to what I've done you know we added a little bit more uh, you can see the sky a little different so the, you know it really depends every time you do it things may change my first image was a little darker uh, but I think this one is just fine so so here we go uh, hopefully this is helpful for you guys if you want to learn something different just uh, drop me a line in my comment sections or you can always uh, send me an email as well if you feel like it hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial and we will see you next time